All right. Um, let's just give another minute or two. Just a, not even a minute. I'll wait till it's 1231. All right. Well, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's session. Officially, it's called How to Scope Your Scanning Project and Enable Your Organization's Digital Transformation. And that's probably the longest title we've had in a while. So I'm sure, like me, you're looking forward to learning a lot about that today. Quick introduction. My name is David Prather, and I'm the Executive Vice President of Arma Metro, New York City, and Long Island chapter. And we're very excited to welcome all of you to this month's chapter meeting. Uh, today will be presented by Anthony Davis from Forest Solutions and Steve Irons from DocSolid. And uh, they will no doubt uh, introduce themselves when we get started. However, before we get started, I just wanna go over a few housekeeping items. Today's presentation, if you haven't seen already, is being recorded. We will share a link to this recording uh, with you by email after the event is complete, so you can um, revisit the content at a later time if you wish. Uh, we also invite you to you know, comment and ask questions today. Just use the chat button um, at the bottom of the screen in Zoom. If you think of a question at any point, just Put it in there and then we'll either address it uh, during uh, Q&A or uh, you may actually get the answer as the presentation um, uh, progresses. Uh, other questions we could just you know leave till the end. And of course, please keep yourself on mute unless you're asking a question during the Q&A part. We don't want the background noise, your dogs, your coworkers, you know, et cetera. So they're all distracting uh, for the presenters and to you, the rest of the audience. And then finally, uh, at the very end, I'll just have a few announcements after today's discussion um, to wrap things up. All right, so uh, let's get started. Uh, the first of our two presenters is Anthony from Forest Solutions. So let me hand things over so he can introduce himself and his company. Thank you very much. And um, thank you everyone for inviting um, the, the, us today. Um, I did you a favor and I, and I, and I reduced the, the length of the title to scoping your scanning project. <laughs> um, and that, that's really what we're going to be focusing on today. But um, uh, I've been with Forest Solutions about 18 months. I've been working in outsourcing for over half of my career, outsourcing and, and um, staffing, mainly with law firms and banks, a couple of other organizations out of that. But I, I've had time with Pitney Bowes Management Services, Williams Lee, and think of Forest Solutions as a similar organization to them. Steve, do you want to do a quick intro? You're on mute. <laughs> shows I have good, that shows I have good off camera behavior. I'm, I'm Steve Irons, I'm the president of Doc Solid, and uh, happy to join Anthony today to play a role in his presentation. We make paper to digital solutions for the legal market. And we often forest, uh, partner with Forest as we are now at, in your city on a big project. So happy to be here. Correct, yeah. So um, for those of you who don't know, Forest Solutions is predominantly an outsourcing and recruitment business. Um, uh, we, we offer all a range of services, on-site outsourcing for reprographics, mail, document scanning and imaging, um, records management. Um, there's a, there's a, a snippet of some of the firms that and banks that we work with. I think we have about 50 of the AMLO 200 as, as clients in some way, either as an outsourced client or as a staffing client. Um, and, um, and we, we've done a lot of these kind of scanning projects with law firms on one-off basis uh, over the last couple of years. And I'll uh, tell you about DocSolid. We make, as I said, paper to digital solutions for the legal market. Quite often they're focused on back files like Anthony's gonna talk about today and also on day forward projects. In a 
integrated with the firm's document management system. We, like so many of you, uh, uh, changed our business when the pandemic hit. We built a digital mailroom and a digital records room solution specifically for law firm operations. And we call that the normal now. I, I, I think we're all still waiting to figure out what new normal is, but there are some new operations that are normal now in law firms. Mm -hmm. And digital mailroom, digital records room are examples of that. Can you click Anthony? As a track record for the top 10 law firms have paper to digital projects with us today. And uh, we're the market leader now in digital mail rooms, digital records rooms for this new hybrid workforce that we're figuring out together. Thanks, Steve. So what we're really here today to talk about is how to boil the ocean. Uh, it's not, a, I don't need to teach anybody here about information governance or the importance of information governance, but it's really just um, the number of organizations that we've spoken to in the last or worked with in the last two years, really, through COVID, that for various reasons, they've got images like this building up in their um, organizations. They know that, that they need to do something about it, but it's just how, where do you start? How do you figure out how many documents you have? How do you figure out where those documents are gonna go? Um, which ones that you can destroy, which ones that you need to scan. And then how do you scan them? You know, a millions of documents takes an army of people and a, and a, and a technology suite. Um, so in, in short, how do you boil the ocean? Um, I don't need to explain to, to you guys the, the benefits of digital transformation, but um, it, it clearly, if you can convert all of these documents that need to be converted into digital format, you increase agility, you improve chain of custody, and you improve compliance, massively reduce expenditure. Some of the biggest projects we've been working on the last uh, 12 months has been about re reducing real estate for our clients. It's not just about um, compliance and uh, chain of custody. Um, it's about, you know, we've got 10 million documents in filing cabinets on eight floors and we're going down to two floors. We're, we're in a hybrid environment with flexible workspace, but there's more filing cabinets than desks. <laughs> um, and then ultimately supporting a digital strategy. Those documents are filled with data um, and that data is not being uh, extracted in, in, in an effective way when it's still on paper. But I don't need to tell you guys all of this. Um, but but it, it is important just to highlight a bit of interaction, if I can. <laughs> um, most people I talk to are either uh, not planning any type of type of type of digitization project anytime soon. But but um, if you are, it would be interesting just in the chat. Tell me where you're at in your journey. Are you considering a digitization project? Um, are you scoping a digitization project? Um, have you already started a project? Or are you in group E, which is actually quite a common group, <laughs> which is uh, your digitization project has spiraled out of control? Um, starting, starting. So we've got considering, starting. Ah, I see an E. <laughs> um, we've started. Okay. Dreaming, I like that. Well, that's what we're here to talk about. It's 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 how, how do you how do you get started, um, or if you've got started, have you scoped it the right way, um, out of control? Yeah, um, and, and that's what we see, and that's what we're going to try and address. We've got some helpful tips today um, to to how we've done some of these projects in the past. Uh, there's a couple more coming in. Okay, so. We're all in the thick of it. It looks like a lot of C's, D's, and E's, um, and a few, a few out of controls. Good. Well, we're in the right place. Um, so let me get back to the presentation. Um, really, just so we focus in on what I'm going to talk about today, we think of these projects as a, a four-stage process. Um, stage one 
the information governance policy, define the, spread, the scan and shred policy. Hopefully most of you have <laughs> policies in place. Um, they may need dusting off, uh, but, but we're not going to dig into that today. The, 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 the scanning and shred policy um, is, is not, not part of this presentation, but I do get it. It's, it's critical. What we're really going to focus on is stage two and three. The basic level of, of how do you figure out what you've got and, and how much it's going to, what it's going to take, what resources and what cost and what technology it's going to take to turn what you've got into a digital, uh, into di digital um, format. So how do you count and grade the documents? That's the first part of the presentation. And then Steve's going to talk more about indexing and profiling of documents. And then once you've gone through stage two, you've effectively scoped the project. Um, stage three then is, is figuring out how much resource you need, what technology you need, what workflow, how long it's going to take, or maybe you have a defined amount of time and that will drive the budget. Um, we're working, we worked on a project a few, few months back where it was a million documents needed to be scanned in two weeks. <laughs> that took an army of people. Um, but, but if your timing is different, it can change the budget. Um, We'll touch a little bit on the implement people project management reporting stage four, but, but really what we're here to talk about today is scoping the project, figuring out exactly what it's going to take to take your big pile of, uh, of documents and, and work out which ones you get rid of and which ones you scan and, and how much it's all going to cost. Um, as I said, I'm not going to go massively into the, the scan and shred policy, information governance policy, but what I will say is that if you get that right, um, <clears throat> typically 30 or 40% of that big pile of documents are ripe for destruction off the bat. Um, I think um, uh, speaking to Steve before, we've, we've seen examples um, where that 30 to 40% can be much higher. Steve, do you have some thoughts on that? You're on mute again, by the way. <laughs> I see. I see a theme occurring here, Steve. Yep. Well, we all know our friends at um, Iron Mountain do a good business in storing records. And uh, we're trying to do a better business in capturing them for value digitally. Quite often, um, projects are too big uh, when they get scoped. And the only decision left in the amount of time and the amount of money is to just store them off site. So uh, those folks are standing in the wings, but the inside secret is often as much of as 80% of the documents that are on a floor are, you know, retired matters in a law firm, for example, or closed matters. And, uh, you know, frankly, it is what it is. So if you can identify that volume of documents to get at the inception of your project, then you can have a successful scanning project because you've radically reduced the volume you've got to address it and it's just a fact you know some of those documents maybe should be stored or shredded and you want to identify uh minimize the amount that are going to be run through the scanning project right so stage one of the scanning project is to figure out which documents don't have to be scanned <laughs> exactly Effectively. right <clears throat> and now we're getting to something real quick sure sure um i'm Somewhat familiar with Doc Solid. I recently worked on a project with Forest Solutions at Epstein Becker and Green here in Newark. They use Doc Solid, they use Postmark. Um, I worked with Bill Lipner from Doc Solid. He is the uh, representative that assisted us with troubleshooting. Uh, some issues that we were having in the beginning of the project, uh, which started in mid-November. Uh, one thing that I came to learn about uh, information governance with regards to retaining documents, even if the mat even if the matter is already closed, uh, we the law firm still has to retain documents for up to ten years, which I guess is why they still you know law firms hold on to documents after matters are already closed is the fact that under law they have to make, retain them for up to 10 years and then after that they can go ahead and start getting rid of them and I mean 10 years is a long time to 
hold on to stuff and you will probably, you know, people will likely forget that they even have them. Yeah. And that, that may be part of the problem. And, and of course, Christian, it's not as easy as just saying 10 years. There's various retention requirements for various types of matters and such. But the fact is, if the documents need to be retained, that doesn't mean they cannot be retained digitally. In other words, scanned, quality control checked, and then shredded because you're retaining them digitally. So you still Absolutely. always have that scanning option in the quote retention category. But you know, as Anthony said, you want to try to identify, you don't have to scan at the inception of a project regardless. Right. right. Well, the, 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 um, the, the objective of the project was the fact that, or is the fact because it's still ongoing. Um, I'm just not uh, managing it anymore. I'm working out of uh, MacArthur in English again. But uh, the objective is that they're going to they're going through a remodeling project. They're going to mm -hmm. restack their floors or they're just simply uh, remodeling their floors. And so they have to reduce the amount of space <laughs> in the office that all of these files are taking up. And they're basically just um, converting them into digital and then having them go directly into their uh, iManage database so that they have a digital copy of these physical documents that are taking up space because they're they will soon be moving into another building temporarily while they their floors are being renovated. Right, right, and I can tell you the that what we're going to talk through now, the process of counting and grading the documents and figuring out how many people you need to scan those. In, I know in the case of the project you just mentioned, it's millions of documents um, and there's a time scale. So we went through this process to figure out how many people do we need? Um, and it, it's, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's not straightforward, but I'm gonna give the, the audience now some tips about um, and how we do it. And there's two critical metrics that you need, the number of documents and the rate at which you can scan those documents. Um, so there's, there's, we, we, we think of documents being held in a few different ways, linear footage, storage boxes, and in cabinets. Um, so what we tend to do, step one is to, is to walk the floors and, la and, and label all of the cabinets and boxes and everything with post-it notes to, to figure out how many linear feet we have, how many boxes we have, and how many cabinets we have. And, 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 I'll, and I'll show you on the next page how, how we build a, a profile of the number of documents. And then we look at the, we, we have figured out a way of grading the documents and different quality of document takes more or less time to actually scan. Um, so the two, the two metrics that we're looking for is the document count and the scan rate. So let me, let me dig into that. Um, you might want to, oh, how, how, what am I doing? Here we go. So um, very simply, we, based on the, the thousands and thousands of banker boxes that, that we've um, opened and found everything from a shoe to um, 2,000 pages, um, but banker boxes, lateral file cabinets, two different predominantly two different um, widths, 30 inch and 42 inch, the four drawer standard file cabinets, and just linear footage of, of documents in, in, uh, in, on shelves. We've, we've figured out that a banker box is normally around about 1800 sheets of paper. A lateral filing cabinet is about 5,000. A 42 inch filing cabinet is about 6,000. Four drawer filing cabinet, is two and a half thousand, and uh, a li each linear foot is about 800, 1800 pages. Um, <clears throat> it does vary, but um, and if you want to be, if you want to overestimate, you go at the top end of that range. If you want to underestimate, you go at the bottom end of that range. But broadly, this is going to capture, and this is a few hours work per floor. But this is going to capture very high level in a in a roundabout way the number of documents the size of your problem. Um, 
And then we go on to what we call grading the documents. And we've, we've, the next page gives you more detail on that. So you can look at it in more detail, um, either take a screenshot or, or we're recording this so you can look back at it later. But there's six levels of, of, of grades. Level A is um, uh, the, as you can see on the picture, it's, 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 un, it's, it's paper that's printed, two-sided, no, no um, staples, no, nothing holding it together. It can literally be, be loaded onto the document feeder and scanned. You do about two and a half thousand per hour. And we go all the way through to um, crumpled up uh, uh, receipts, <laughs> level EE. Um, and they scan, they're highly manual. Um, it's a highly manual process, um, but we can normally do about a hundred of those per hour. Um, Anthony, I would like to just interject with my expertise here. Can you put that last slide up? For sure. <laughs> I've never seen level A in my life. And in a, <laughs> in a matter file in a law firm, it's those level EEs with paper clips and staples in them. Okay, thank right. you. Go on. Level C, level C is probably the most common. It's it's uh, level C and level D. And the other thing about level D, it's often in folders as well. Um, so level A, clean single or double-sided originals that do not contain any clips, um, binds or staples that can automatically be fed through the Reprographics scram machine. You, if you've got all of that, then you're in luck. Um, we, you probably don't even need to be on this on this webinar. Um, level B. Uh, a mix of single and double-sided, um, but uh, everything else that applies in level A, um, and, and that's uh, 1,500, 1,500 pages an hour. Level C and level D is the most common. Uh, originals that are bound without tabs, containing staples, clips, um, multiple folders, they, they'll require some handling and prepping. Um, and then level D, documents requiring significant handling uh, as a consequence of heavy stapled with fewer than five pages per staple, and it goes on and on. We, we actually have a much more detailed version of this page here. Um, but uh, it, it is, it is the, the, the process is once you've figured out how many documents you got, then you start going into all the boxes and just take a, a visual view and say, this box is a, a box C, this box is a box D. Um, and then when you've, once you've completed all of that, the next stage is to figure out your indexing and profiling. I'll hand over to Steve. Okay, thanks. So DocSolid scan capture solutions are really document inventory solutions. Uh, we uh, profile or index the documents, get a barcode on them, and after that, much of the subsequent processes are automated. So for us, it all starts with, um, indexing or profiling. I'm gonna use the word indexing going forward. Uh, they're kind of interchangeable. In a scanning back file project, you have to devise an indexing approach because indexing is gonna determine how you'll retrieve the images. And high value documents, which would include documents that still have uh, retrieval requirements, they're gonna have detailed indexing to match that requirement. And often, Back files, though, are you know, static documents, and so they're low value or rarely retrieved documents, in which case you're going to look for indexing shortcuts to make that back file project more efficient. And would you click, Anthony? Since the work to do indexing in an overall scanning project can take between 10 and 25% of the project labor, deciding on your approach to indexing is crucial to your project plan. And so when you uh, look at indexing, ideally you can employ some automation. Uh, sometimes though with unstructured documents as we commonly encounter in back files, manual indexing uh, is the only choice of last resort. So you got to balance indexing with document value. And can you click Anthony? And then you've got to think about what can I automate versus what is uh, manual. So if you could automate it, that's like Anthony's beautiful stack of paper that he just showed you, we probably wouldn't be talking. So zone OCR, the ability to scan documents and identify portions of the OCR content that you can extract and populate into your indexing 
that's perfect. You should always do it. But you rarely can do that when it's a big back file project because you've got old documents, they're static and they got dust on them, right? So uh, DocSolid focuses on getting documents barcoded up front, which is kind of a pre-scan process. And we're gonna index using the paper. Once you do that though, you've got barcoded documents that move through the scanning and, and the uh, rest of the processes, including disposition when everything's done. So you build in a lot of productivity and process integrity for what happens next in the steps. Quite often indexing uh, takes place, particularly on homegrown projects using barcoded cover sheets. So you'll type into a software product, some indexing value, and you'll print a barcode cover sheet. And then you'll put that on, stack, on top of the stack of pages that you wanna scan. Barcode cover sheets, I would call, uh, they're a role player. Sometimes they, they can help you be more productive, but mostly they're requiring that you use printers and you're introducing more paper. And so they're kind of a, 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 a small player in a, in a big project. And then lastly, as a category, you have manual data, data entry where somebody is gonna have to read something from the scanned document. This manual data entry tends to be post-scan. So you have a way to get the document scanned quite often with document separator sheets so that you can break them up when you're looking that, at them as image packages. And a human being is gonna sit there and they're gonna type something in for each document. Again, this is a last resort, it's, it's labor intensive, it's error prone, but it sometimes is common, particularly with old documents that are gonna put through a back file. And then I would just point out that really none of this has much to do with full page OCR, which you just should always do. It's mortal sin these days to scan a document and not do full page OCR, because that's gonna give you full text search on, it, on your repository when all is done. But rarely can you use that kind of OCR or full text search for your key strategy in a, in a project. Uh, the bottom line is indexing, we think is, is the critical decision that gets made in how you're gonna run a project. And quite often there are bodies of your scanned inventory <laughs> that will be indexed differently. So you not only wanna make smart decisions, but quite often you wanna make sure you have um, options in how you profile different parts of your project. Can you click, Anthony? So, you know, we all often call uh, these back file projects scanning projects, but the actual work of scanning is a small part of the process. And the whiteboard here depicts a generic flow uh, in a back file process that DocSolid would represent. And uh, the, Second step there where you see barcode and airmail two, which is our records room software, that, that's where you get things indexed and, and barcoded. Uh, but if you can bring into focus a good indexing strategy, this entire flow of work can be made uh, more productive and uh, more, and you, you can add process integrity. So literally, you can help your prep, you can help your DMS or ECM system delivery for the images. You can do uh, major advancements in quality control steps. And then you can also use uh, uh, advanced indexing to help you stage the paper after it's been scanned for some period of time before it's put through a formal disposition, which usually means shredding. So uh, a few check marks that we would point out that you need to think about at this step of your project planning. Quite often, rightfully, everybody is focused on doing this big back file. It's gonna cost a lot of money and it's gonna take a lot of time. But you also have to think about what is life gonna be like when it's all done. You generally still have a flow of inbound paper. So ideally you're gonna invest in a solution and a set of methodologies that once the project is done can also handle your day forward operations as additional paper comes in. Uh, the second item is that the integration with the document management system or outside of the legal market, your enterprise content 
management system. It's really crucial. All of them have a way that they, they can ingest scanned images and metadata, but there's ways that you can think about integrating with them on the front end as well to help you automate profiling. So you want to do as much as you can. You want to have as many touch points as you can for uh, automation and process integrity to integrate with the core DMS destination for your scanned images. The advanced indexing options that we would talk to you about, they can actually extend your outsourced project options as well. I'll show you on the next screen our digital records room software, which is browser based. So it's the zero install solution. And it reflects what the document management system or the ECM system has as its indexing, but the operators are not logged into it. So you can abstract access to it and therefore allow third party operators who for security sake, you don't wanna have logged into your DMS system to do some things in indexing that might uh, otherwise be disabled for security reasons. And then lastly, as I mentioned, advanced indexing, and in our case, getting barcodes on paper can set up high value quality controls and shredding. So the simplest example of that is with our solutions, after you've scanned something, it's pre-indexed, the barcode is gonna put it where it belongs in the DMS system. And that paper then in stacks, uh, can be pushed into a quality control process. And for each document, you can wand the barcode and start a session for quality control that is both fast, but provides an audit that, uh, of that quality control session for every individual document. And when you do things like that, you actually liberate shredding. And quite often people are, for for good reasons, timid about shredding. They keep things longer. They want to do some audits. Well, if you build that in, shredding where your big ROI is uh, can be done, done with confidence. Next slide, Anthony. So lastly, just to get on and off stage here, this is an example uh, of three different indexing levels that you can do in our software from just one screen. And they're meant to be exemplary of indexing to the file level, to the folder level, or to the document level. Go ahead and click, Anthony. So ultimately, and click again, we want to get images into the document management system. We're going to use barcode labels, which just they're just pre-printed and sequential, and each operator has one. And we're going to get those barcode labels on those documents so that once you scan them, they know where to go. They manage themselves through the process. In a law firm, they file things uh, under a matter and your clients have different matters. So the first thing we need to tell the software is what matter does this belong in? Can you click please? So in our software screen, it's not only a, an indexing screen, but if you know the client, but you don't know the matter, you can enter the client and our software will show you the different matters for that client. Go ahead and click. And if you click on that matter, click again, then it will show you in the document management system, the folder structure for that matter. Now, again, our software is not, the, the logged in user isn't touching the document management system. Software is simply reflecting what it looks like over there. At this point, you know, somebody could have scanned this entire document just against a, full, a file level index. And you could have some default other descriptors that go in there. Or if the nature of the project is they wanna put documents into a folder, now they could just point and click at that folder and they would have performed the indexing. And can you click one more time, Anthony? And we can also pull across the entire ECM or document management system profile screen where the indexing values can either be defaulted, automated, or uh, repeated, or manually entered. So in this one screen, uh, you would be doing a project, either go ahead and click Anthony at the, at the file or the folder or the document level. In the end, when you're done for, for each document, you, uh, the software is going to show you that it knows your barcode number, you just take it off and put it on the first page of the document. 
After that, when you scan it, that document's going to end up in the file with a default set of descriptors, in the file and the folder with a default set of descriptors, or in the file and the folder with document identifiers that were entered here. So those three types of file, folder, or document level are generally the types of things you have to decide on when you do a, an indexing project. And as I mentioned, quite often a big project is going to have some things that'll be profiled only to the file level and some things that'll be profiled to those other levels. We happen to do it all out of the same user interface. And each operator would only see as much on screen as they needed to get their work done for indexing. Yep. Thanks, Anthony. Thank you. Um, so once we've figured all that out, we know how many documents we got, we know the, the quality of the documents, so we know the scan rates, we know what how we're going to, what approach we're going to take to indexing, we know what approach we're going to take to quality control, we can, st and we know exactly how long this project has to be. We've had, we've had the whole range over the last couple of years. We've had clients that have just said, I need to do this project, I'll put I've got a couple of people who I can put on it and they'll do it in their spare time. That's a five-year project. Um, and and it, it will probably be longer than that because there'll be more documents coming as we go. But we've had other clients. Um, there's a case study at the back of this presentation. Um, Mid-COVID, uh, a, a immigration um, department needed a couple of million documents scanned and they had a month so um, on that basis, if you, if you have, you know how many documents you've got and you, you need one month, and we know how many pages uh, can be scanned per month, then you know exactly how many resources you need. The estimated project costs are based on the number of people and <laughs> the people costs are the most variable at the moment. Um, but, but in this example, we've taken, uh, we've, We've assumed that we've we've counted three and a half million documents. Uh, they're all grade C. This is an ideal project. Um, add into that the, the, the document prep, the quality control, and we know that we need about seven and a half thousand hours to do this project. Squeeze that into six months. We know we need seven people. Um, and 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 right there. You have a budget, you have a time scale, and you have scoped the project ready for approval. Seven people for six months is probably going to be, I don't know, it depends um, where you are, but, but uh, you can probably assume that, I mean, we, we, we tend to use um, temps for this. We have a staffing agency and we can ramp up the, the project that Christian mentioned um, correct me if I'm wrong, Christian. There's 20 odd people there um, um, on that project. We started with it started with three, then it went up to six. Last I checked, there were six people that, um, with between two shifts, so a total of a dozen. But right. that may have increased. I'm not 100 percent right. sure. And but that, that there was about 12 or 15 people when I when I uh, left that project. Right, and that's that's exactly what we'd expect. It's it's 10, 15, 20 people. Um, the the immigration project was was twenty five people for two months. Um, we did a project with IDB Bank, and that was I think eight people for six months. Um, but the, <laughs> I think Steve, you probably have some thoughts on the importance of figuring out how many people you need and making sure that you actually have those people. I always like presenting with Forrest because our clients up front, they're fixated on our, our software and they think that's the key to getting the project done. It's not. The labor is the key to getting the project done. And you, you know, this exercise is essential. Our role with software is to optimize this labor that you've seen here and to build process, integrity, um, efficiencies, and choices. But you know, this is what has to happen uh, up front. It, it's, and, and a lot of law firms uh, have do-it-yourself approach to, to projects 
we're involved in them quite often. Um, and, you know, it, it's hard for a law firm to run a factory the, the way this requires. Um, so this is essential. And um, I always like seeing this advocacy. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the word you use there, factory, that's exactly what we're creating. And, and the projects where I've seen the scoping done and, and then we, we're going to try and do it with our own people they they just they they don't happen um uh so you know it's a little self-serving but um that's where our organization comes in being able to find um labor on a temporary basis to do these projects but then oversee it with um with operations managers that have experience um delivering these type of projects um so this is a typical project typical project plan, um, uh, which um, you can see includes a, a VP of operations with oversight, but day to day project management, and then office service associates for prepping and imaging. Um, and the beginning of the project, there's a lot more prepping than imaging. Um, and then as the more and more documents become prepped, we end up uh, doing more heavily scanning. Um, the the execution is people process technology but it's absolutely at this point it's people um many of our clients have their own equipment uh but it, it is it does make sense if it's a high volume project to lease or, or buy some more more appropriate high volume scanning equipment find some by the way we're we're talking about this as an on-site project um anthony real quick <clears throat> yeah just so you know, you may want to exit out of Teams. I think your colleague is getting very excited about something in these <laughs> world. Yeah, sooner or later, he's going to say something. You don't want Flash, though. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's been working on our Net Promoter Score project for a long time, and uh, it's now live, so he's excited. Um, yeah, so uh, we're, we're talking about on-site outsourcing projects, uh, on-site projects here rather than picking up all the documents and taking them to another location. Because 99% of the time we have these conversations, our clients do not want to pick all these documents up and take them to another location. They want it to be done within the client's um, environment. Um, we normally get a nice basement level um, location. Um, and if there's already equipment, then we use the equipment that's there. But, but the key to it is ramping up of that temporary stuff and then having the management and project project management oversight. Any more comments on that, Steve? Uh, no, I think you're spot on. Okay. I, I, I would just say, you know, in advocacy for forest, um, having expertise to do this work on site is a market differentiator. Most, um, outsource scanning organizations want to get the records off site to do the work and um, most law firms don't want that to happen if they can avoid it so mm. it's a big yeah. strength of forest so we talk about a couple of case studies idb bank um during covid uh, they uh, this was right in the middle of covid um they relocated uh and they went from they reduce the number of floors. They've in, introduced a lot of uh, flexible working, a, a huge um, move towards the hybrid working environment. But the, whole, the only thing holding them back was 3 million documents in 400 cabinets. <laughs> um, so um, we scanned 2 million of those documents and shredded the other million through the whole process that we talked about before. It took 10 people six months. Um, and obviously reduced allowed them to reduce the real estate costs with the side benefit of now having a paperless office and, and, a, and a, a, a scan forward um, process um, there's there's a few filing cabinets still on site but 90 percent of it's now reduced and two million documents scanned into the document management system and then the other um, project i mentioned before was a um, adjustment of status immigration um, purge project 
I know all about the uh, green card application. It's very paper heavy. And uh, um, I think a few weeks into COVID, this, this firm um, based over in uh, North Carolina, um, the, the attorneys needed to get their hands on the, the applications. The applications were all in paper format. Um, and they, they, we didn't have any time. So it was a million paper applications that needed to be scanned and delivered to the attorneys that were working on it. So we ramped up 25 people for a four week project um, and digitized the whole lot and delivered it to the remote lawyers. Um, two yeah, completely different actual, different projects for different reasons, um, but the same process, um, scoping, figuring out the resource you need, ramping up the resource, and then delivering the project. I think that's it. I'm, I think we're more than, I think we've got 15 minutes, so more than happy to answer questions or, or get comments, feedback. You mentioned immigration. Uh, that was most of what we were dealing with on this in this uh, scanning project, where um, the firm was sponsoring visas for um, people who were coming over to work with the firm's clients, and many of them were immigration, and there was a lot of pages, a lot of documents. <laughs> Yeah, I think I had about a million pages in my own green card application from memory. Well, immigration is an example, like we talked about earlier, where you got to physically re retain much of that paper. That doesn't mean you shouldn't scan it, right? It's kind of like estate planning. If you've got to physically retain those documents, you want to be working with digital copies, mm -hmm. right? That's how you For have For the most work. part, the documents were said to be shred after 14 days, but some of them would eventually have to be returned, at least to be reviewed by the attorney before they could make a decision on keeping or destroying those uh, files once they were scanned. But we basically were scanning them as is, color for color, you know, black and white. Uh, but yeah, a lot of the files that we were dealing with were mostly immigration, immigration related, I should say. Anybody got any thoughts on how their scanning projects are spiraling out of control? Are there more documents than you thought, or it's more complicated to prep them and you don't have the right equipment? Be interested to hear some of the challenges some people have. We're all friends here. <laughs> okay, I'll speak up. In Collier County, I'm with the school district. And um, we decided that we would try to image all the student cumulative folders from 1923 to current. It was monumental undertaking. And I think financially I had it recorded properly, just staffing wise, I did not. And without, there was, there was nothing to pull from. I mean, I was kind of on my own figuring this out. And we, we neglected to realize that others would see what was happening and want now finance, HR, legal, everybody wants their things in. And um, it's, then you, once you get imaged in, then you have to maintain the loose paperwork. And so it's just, it's a constant, it's overwhelming. I don't know how else to. I don't, how you, I don't know how you project to staff that up to meet the demands, especially with the school district and the funding. Right. Yeah. 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 The, the scoping part of it is so critical to give that uh, the idea of, of what the cost is going to be, the timescales, the resource requirement. Um, there's a, there was a note in the chat, um, staples, um, millions and billions of staples from Sean. Um, yeah, and they need to be removed, you know, effectively, and it's it's time consuming, and that that's where we would grade those documents as a grade D, and we'd we'd expect them to be, you know, 
processed at the, the, the rate of a grade D document, which slows you down. But it is extremely useful to know that when you're scoping and you're figuring out how much resource you need. Um, uh, and, and, and if nothing else at the beginning of the project, you can figure out whether or not you're ever going to finish this project um, from the scoping, just from the scoping. A couple more things in the chat. How to large engineering maps fit into these systems? Good question. There are, there are um, scanners that can do that, but Steve, I don't know if you've scanned any large engineering maps into document management systems. Well, we're mostly, most of our projects are source documents and, and they're in law firms. But obviously, as you said, there are uh, scanners for those types of things. How do they fit into these projects with magnificent difficulty, right? <laughs> There's, there are specialized organizations who do that for a living. And, you know, I would say find one because it, it, if you've got a significant blend of those types of documents in with standard source documents, it's pretty disruptive to a project, it, you know, if they have to be scanned. <clears throat> Yeah, I think it's the same answer to the question around microfilm and microfiche. Yeah, right. Exactly. It, it's there, there are machines, but there are specialists. Uh, that's one of the things that you would probably take to an offsite provider. Um, but there are specialist organizations that do that. I have worked on a project like that many years ago. Um, um, don't come across it, the microfiche too often now, though. Okay. Any more for any more questions or? I have a question on, um, so a lot of the work that you did, accounting paper, um, I've done that part and we've done disposition. We're a very old company and something that I think that I found when I look at what's within the files, not everything within a file needs to get digitized either, right? So you can reduce that even more. However, the difficulty is actually figuring out what gets digitized and what does not. So I'm wondering, have you ever dealt with that or have you used software? Maybe even if you, obviously preferably you prefer not to scan it in, but even after it's scanned in to say, this is an exact duplicate, right? What's your have you ever encountered this or dealt with it either digitally or manually? Steve, do you want to take that? Yeah, we, well, we see that often, right? And uh, I wish there was a silver bullet I could give you here, but it really just does, does go to project planning. You, you need to typify your files and typify the redundancies in them. You know, for example, in a, a law firm matter, uh, particularly old ones, there's a lot, a lot of duplicates in there and uh, they run up your numbers, but quite often, if the uh, nature of the project is um, that they're low value files to begin with, you wanna just go ahead and scan everything because the work and potentially the error to uh, call those from the files is more than it's worth. So, um, you know- it, it's that, doesn't, really... that doesn't up the cost like with scanning because often the cost to scan that Click charge is what's high, right? So let's let's just say that the cost. It's a tough to, call, right? Sure. Let's say the click charge for um, scan is pick a number, say two cents an image. I don't even know what going rates are, but just say it's two cents an image. What's the charge in prep for somebody to go and and do those removals from the files before they enter the process? And if you think about it, it's generally not going to be your third party outsourcer that's qualified to make those decisions. So you're paying somebody more money, somebody that understands the files. It's almost always more expensive to call um, when you calculate the labor and, and the labor of the uh, person that's got to do it than it is to scan duplicates, for example. That's not saying it, it's a, it's a no-brainer decision, but, you know, sometimes uh, you've got a big project and you've got things that should be called, but it, it's just better to scan the things that should be called in the process that you've set up than to endure the work and expense to call. 
Okay, thank you. All right, we just have a couple minutes left. Anything, anybody else? No. Okay. All right. We must have answered everybody's questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're pondering what the questions are going to be. So, uh, yeah. well, by by all means, forward more on to us. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's um, it's a. I know that there's a lot of spiraling out of control projects out there, even before we did the poll on chat. So, by all means, ask us questions. Yeah. All right. So let me close this out here. First, again, thanks uh, to Anthony and Steve. Great presentation, um, great time today. Uh, quick reminder for those of you who might have joined late or left early, as a joke, uh, this presentation is recorded and we'll share a link with you via email in the next 24 hours or so. So it's not gonna come right afterwards necessarily, but you'll have it shortly enough. Okay, so what's next? Well, we just started 2022, so look out for ARMA Communications on other upcoming events. Uh, for now, most will be hosted virtually. Well, they'll all be hosted virtually, but we hope that um, uh, in you know <laughs> by the time the summer rolls around, we will start to have in-person events again. So again, we'll be hosting these events uh, virtually, um, and you know we always appreciate our business partners. And a final reminder: less than a month now our annual confirmed conference. Uh, we hope that uh, you will um, attend that. There's a lot of great sessions over uh, two half days. So it doesn't take all of your day, either day. Um, plenty to learn there. So look for some announcements coming out next week that uh, we, we, that'll really be, that'll really entice you to sign up. Okay, and then finally for our non-members, um, it's a great idea to be a member of ARMA. Um, especially this local chapter. Uh, you know, a lot of what we focus around the, the greater New York area is specific to, um, you know, the industries that are here, legal, uh, financial services, uh, pharma, regulated industries. And, uh, you know, we try to cater to that. And by getting involved, you know, you'll get the opportunity to connect with your peers and, you know, meet new folks, uh, get questions answered around records, information management, governance, and so on. And uh, who knows, you know, during the great resignation, you might find your next career uh, through Armand New York City. Um, <laughs> but basically, you know, if you're interested, please, you know, reach out, go to our website. Uh, we have just updated it. And um, if you're interested in becoming a member of the New York City, Long Island chapter, um, just send an email to our VP of membership. That's Leslie Smith, <laughs> leslie.smith at armanyc.com. All right. So that's it. Thanks everyone for joining today from all of us at the Arma Metro New York City, Long Island chapter. Continue to be safe as the tri-state begins to open up again and enjoy the rest of your day and be sure to register for Confirm. Thank you very much. Bye Thank everybody. You. Thank you, bye.